welcome to Friendship Moments, uh, Friendship Baptist Church. We're located in Killen, Alabama, and we're so glad that you tuned in to listen. It's been a very interesting uh, past few days. I, I have been amazed at the grace of God and how he's allowed me to share with people. And everybody that knows me knows that my mind uh, thinks a little different, and which I think is good sometimes. But I got a question. How do you eat a watermelon? Now, I personally don't like watermelon, so, but I'm gonna tell you how you eat a watermelon. You eat a watermelon one bite at a time. You can't eat the whole thing because your mouth isn't that big. And the Bible is the same way. God's word, will he will feed you one verse at a time. Don't try to digest it all at once because it will overwhelm you. And God has a process called sanctification where we grow and we learn and we increase in wisdom. When I was a young child, uh, my dad had an evangelist come to our church. And I'll never forget this. We were a little small country church, no air conditioning. It was middle of summer. We had the windows up and the Baptist fans are going and... Uh, after we sang a few songs, this evangelist got up and he said, I've got a three-point sermon tonight. He said, point number one, there's folks dying and going to hell around us every day. Point number two, most of you don't give a rip, but he didn't say give a rip. He used a worldly term that I'm not going to use. And then point number three, he said, most of you are more concerned about point number two then you are point number one, and he sat down. The next night of revival, I can't tell you how many people came down and either got saved or rededicated their life to God because they went home and they thought about that one, one point that there's folks dying and going to hell around us. I had the privilege this past week to sat down with a, a person that I'm not going to name names, but got to share the love of God, and this person is uh, sick and most likely has an uncurable disease. But I got to share the love of God and the grace of God, and I got to share about how God loved us enough to, to die on that cross. And I, I turned to Romans 8.1, and here's, here's what I read. Paul said in Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And as I shared that, this person looked at me and said, I hadn't been a good person. I hadn't been to church much. Sure hadn't give a lot of money. Hadn't done a lot of good things. I said, preacher, it can't be that simple. And I said, yes, it is that simple because Jesus paid it all on that cross. Jesus did the good works. He gave everything that he had. And in John, the book of John, uh, 1 John, the third chapter, it says that we who know Christ pass from death to life. Meaning this, what we call life now is not life. We're just existing. But when a Christian dies... That's when they're more alive. And when Paul says there's no condemnation, it actually means this, as if you never sinned. When Jesus went to that cross and he paid that price, and when the Holy Spirit convicts you and you say, yes, Lord, I agree with you, I need a Savior, you are cleansed from all sin. It, it's as if you had never sinned. Well, preacher, I don't understand that. You don't have to understand it. You have to accept it by faith. That's why we are to trust in what Jesus did. And in the 8th chapter of Roman, Paul goes on and he gives example after example after example of the grace of God. And he even tells us in Romans 8 that nothing can separate us from the love of God. So listen, you might be out there, and, and I'm going to make this short tonight because I want you to remember what I said. Folks are dying and going to hell all around us, and you may be one of them. Most of us today listening don't give a rip. 
And most of us are more concerned about number two than we are about number one. So I want you to remember this verse that there is no condemnation. I don't care how bad you've been. I don't care what you haven't done. And I don't care what you have done. Jesus Christ on that cross died. He paid the price and he paid it for your sins. You cannot out the grace of God. It is impossible. So don't let the world tell you, well, you, you're, you're dying now, you're older now, you can't be good enough to get into heaven. You can't work good enough to get into heaven. You can't give enough money to get into heaven. Jesus Christ said he was the only way to heaven. It's not money, it's not works, it's not being good. It is accepting what he did on that cross and agreeing that you need a Savior. Amen. Yes. So I'm about through. Are you saved? Is the world and Satan telling you that you're too bad to be saved? They're lying to you. Get the Bible out and read it. The Apostle Paul said he would compare his sins with yours any time. He said he was the chiefest of sinners. But Jesus saved him. And he can save you. And listen, if you have been at a church or you've been around a group of people that make you feel little because you're not saved or makes you feel bad because of all the sin, come to a church where we will love on you and point you to the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. I challenge you to come here just one time. Thank you for listening. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, right now, there are people listening who are not saved. And God, there are people listening who are saved and they have family and to be honest, they hadn't cared enough. They're more concerned about looks and about tradition and about my way than they are that their family is dying and going to hell. Lord, convict them right now. Lord, wrap your arms around them and love them. Let the lost know that Jesus is the only way. And he's not waiting to hit them in the head with a hammer. He is waiting to forgive their sins and to put shoes on their feet and a ring on their finger and a robe on their back and to have a party that, would, that we cannot imagine. So Lord, let your word go out tonight and touch people's hearts and let them realize that today is the day of salvation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.